We all love the broads. So on Thursday the 6th of July 2017, we hired the Madeira, a six-berth boat for a week. But we'll only stay five days. The weather forecast was good, though on setting out the sky was ominous. Rachel took the wheel as we needed an old hen to guide us, heading from Stalham Stathe to Barton Broad. The twins are now 18 months old and we figured they'd enjoy the trip. Auntie Rachel was over the moon to be able to spend quality time with them. A peaceful evening. Well, we just came out of Stalham and we've uh, just headed down to Barton Broad. It's a beautiful day, the sun's shining. Though there was a terrible thunderstorm as we arrived in Stalham. We're heading over to the, uh, the southern side of Barton Broad, where we can moor up for the night and have a meal. Just enjoy the sunset. The storm blew away and left us with a beautiful evening. The western end of Barton is a place we've moored many times, quiet and sheltered. And indeed the sunsets here can be spectacular. For Barton this is ordinary. I should mention at this point, Nate had not yet joined us. Hello. He was working. Hello. Yeah. Give me a fist. Give me five. The serenity of the broads, one of those pleasures of life. The sun is setting and we, believe it or not, are enjoying dinner on the boat. Hello! I always say this restaurant is the best view in the world. Occasionally on land we get a table with a view, but on the broads we get to choose. Enjoy the sunset in the evening and the sunrise in the morning. A swan came to keep us company. She clearly expressed her love for us. Finally, I sent up the drone. Norfolk is the flattest part of England. The extensive Barton Broad is actually the second largest after Hickling. That's our boat down there, right in the middle of nature. And it's been a great day. I was up early next morning to film the sunrise, about 6.23. We have a blue sky.
the broad is coming to life. It's a great day, and this particular mooring place is always available. An arctic tern, having a rest from feeding the young. We're soon motoring across the broad toward Ersted. We leave Barton at the southern end and proceed down the river Ent through the beautiful village of Ersted. The river here is very narrow, but it enables us to be very close to the bank and we get some great close-up scenery here. The kids are interested in watching the world go by, past wildlife, otters playing in the river. English country gardens, Tudor houses, weeping willows, Whenever I pass this house, I want to buy it. Then we arrive at Howe Hill. The old converted wherry, a reminder of bygone days. It's the location of the electric eel, an electric boat that gives tours of the reed beds and the dikes. and Toad Hall Cottage, where there's an information centre, Broad's Authority. 
in the garden symbiotic existence of flora and fauna the grass providing a colorful setting the flowering plants proud and colorful on a sunny day there's so much hidden beauty on the broads if we'll take time to observe flora the plants and fauna the animals they're actually named after two Roman goddesses the Latin word flora meaning flower before she was a Roman goddess she was a Greek goddess by the name of Chloris which in Greek doesn't mean flower it means green hence the green substance in leaves is called chlorophyll so here we have two roman goddesses playing on the broads by jove the elusive swallowtail eluded us though i've often filmed it I managed to salvage a frame, but it was a good shot. Then it flew away. The Red Admiral, however, had a good year in 2017 and danced for us on this marsh orchid. A joy to behold. I actually nicknamed this meadow, right next to the Toad Hall Cottage, Swallowtail Meadow. They're common here in June and August. But these shots are memorable. Here a bee has a feed with the Admiral. Memories all around. For scenic beauty, this is one of my favorite stretches of the broads, which we will usually pass as we go up to Barton. So we continue on to Renworth. Rachel handles this 40 foot boat with ease. Ludham Bridge, often a bottleneck here. Lower the windscreen, sound the horn, and hope nothing is coming the other way.
but Rachel is well on top of the task. In no time we were moored up on Ramworth Stathe in the A1 mooring. They threw grain to the ducks, which reminds me of Rachel's famous quote when she was about 10 years old here. Daddy, do the local people eat the ducks? When I said no, she said, what a waste. So the ducks had better watch out. Ranworth Stath is another of those iconic Broads locations. For me, always filled with memories, literally going back a long time. We will now return to Stalham as Nate will arrive there tonight. So we headed back up the Ent to meet him. The old phrase, the devil is in the detail, means that we often overlook mistakes because we don't pay attention to detail. But it comes from an older phrase, God is in the detail, meaning attention paid to small things brings big rewards. On the broads, the view has a thousand facets. But as we observe closer, we get the full impact. We picked up Nate and Stalham the night before and moored in Barton Broad again. I'm just gonna weigh anchor though, yeah? Okay. We like the quiet location, especially in the evening. It's great to have Nate with us. The twins were missing him. The kids love being in a dynamic environment where the scene is constantly changing and there's always things to see. Well, we just had uh, overnight again in uh, Barton Broad. It's a beautiful sunny morning. We're heading down to Renworth and uh, we're gonna soon pass through the beautiful village of Usted. And as you can see, it is a beautiful day on Barton Broad. Now these are the youngest sailors on the Broads, just about. Hey, Benny boy! Hello! Hello! So we passed through Ersted again. Many of the houses are thatched with the renowned Norfolk Reed and Sedge creating iconic broad sites. One of the great joys of the broads for me is the variety. Places a mile apart can have a totally different feel to them. Places like this are beautiful 
historic, patently English. Good morning. The village stays. On reflection, I wish I'd stopped here and had a closer look. By the way, in Ersted, even the parish church is thatched. Rachel has been here many times and she loves it. It's just relaxing. Just sailing down the river. Enjoying ourselves. And it is a beautiful place. Right in the midst of nature. How hill again, the electric eel boat, the wherry named Athor, who was an Egyptian goddess of the afterlife in the field of reeds, which was the Egyptian land of the dead. The field of reeds, by the way, is on the left here. In the distance, How Hill House study center and grounds, thatched as usual, and having a fairy tale look to it. It's 12.30 and most of the boats will up and anchor after breakfast and move to the next location. Norfolk is flatland country and near the coast, which lends itself perfectly to windmills. On the broads, they're mainly used for drainage, though nowadays they've been replaced by electric pumps. On the broads, windmills are still iconic reminders of the past and are always a pleasure to behold. After visiting the broads for over 50 years, every place is filled with memories so the enjoyment gets doubled. Ludham Bridge From here to the River Bure is about 15 minutes and a very pleasant 15 minutes it is Nate with his cup of coffee We're on the River Ant, and it's a quite a narrow river at this point. We're enjoying it.
a chance to see wildlife. We then decided to visit St. Bennet's Abbey, another icon of the Broads. It's a place we always visit. The site is believed to have been settled by a group of religious hermits as early as the 9th century. Around 1020, King Canute granted land to the holy men already living here and the Benedictine Abbey was established. It was the only monastery not closed by Henry VIII when he shut down the English monasteries. The last monks left in 1545. Here the twins can have a run around after being cooped up on the boat. We can send up the drone here. Uh, the drone gives a completely different perspective on familiar things. We often see historic sites in cities, but places like this are fascinating. We might even say that the monks here did much to create the broads. They owned vast areas of land and one of the things they, they did was to dig and sell peat. The broads were created when these peat diggings were later flooded. The abbey was itself a very large area with gardens, fish ponds, a swan pond, a church, cloisters, and a dormitory where the monks lived, the ruins of which are still here. And looking at the ruins, it was not a small church. A mill was later built over the main gatehouse. The view showing where the gatehouse used to be. The 700 year old retaining wall still stands. Part of the main gate still visible both from outside and inside. An ornately decorated gatehouse in a mill has to be unique. It's still impressive. We then strolled up to see the ruins of the church. Mm -hmm. 
That's the drone up there. Nate at the helm. Ancient history all around. Creations of yesteryear. I've seen ships in the desert in Egypt and here we see yachts in the field. Then we're off to Horning and Salhouse and Roxham. The journey to Roxham from here is one of the best on the broads. Interesting places along the way, occasional wildlife. As we approach Horning, an abundance of boatyards and boats. And the historic Ferry Inn, advertising a carvery Temptation beckons. In no time we're moored up and seated, ready to make a memory. Too busy eating to shoot the meal. Safe to say that it was a typical carvery and excellent. Amy was loving it. Being on the broads was memorable with Ben and Bella. They had just started walking a few months before, so they were anxious to climb and clamber everywhere. They had their little backpacks with leaves to make sure we kept them safe, especially when they were near the water. It rained on one of the days, so there were nice puddles for them to waddle and jump in. I remember they enjoyed feeding the birds, so much that Ben started throwing gravel at one point, thinking he was throwing bird seeds. As the kids left to feed the birds, we had bought some healthy seed. A large variety of water birds here. There's an Egyptian goose family here. The Broads is an education for any child of any age. I'm sure when they get older, they'll want to know all the names of the birds. So eight in the Ferry Inn Carvery for eight ninety nine. Excellent food. I mean, the guy gave me one pound of pork. I'm sure. Great meal. Ben loves them so much he waves goodbye to them. They really enjoyed that small interlude. The ancient ferry that's been here for a thousand years is still here for a reason. It's ten miles by road to the other side of the river. No bridges, about an hour to cycle and only two minutes by ferry. Female Mallard, 
Ben has his gondolier t-shirt that Rachel bought him in Venice. They loved every minute of this trip. It's not a great day weather-wise, but it's a fun family day. We're coming into Horning. There are certainly many interesting houses here. It's really ancient Horning. Its recorded history dates back to 1020. What was recorded, you might ask? Well, Horning actually has an entry in the Doomsday Book noted under the name Awningham, in 1080, it had 18 villages, 11 smallholders, 4 cattle, 10 pigs, 360 sheep, and the taxable value was 4 pounds. So now you know what was going on here a thousand years ago. Meanwhile, we finished our cup of tea and are relaxing. Next stop, Salhouse Broad, the broad with a beach, which gives a clue to the fact that it is the result of the flooding of 10th century sand and gravel diggings, not of peat diggings like most of the broads. The grey herons love this place, plenty to eat. Then Roxham Broad, open to the breeze and a great place to sail. If you see that up. Don't forget to roar. If you see crocodile, don't forget to scream. <laughs> don't forget to roar, Benny. Don't forget to roar. Next stop, Roxham, known as the capital of the Broads. We didn't stay long. We simply wanted to pick up a couple of things from the supermarket and fill up with water. The sun is setting and we want to get back on the river for a gentle, leisurely evening cruise back to Sal House, where we'll moor for the night. Well, about to head up to Sal House, the sun's come out. A wonderful time of day here. The warm sun giving the place a warm sheen. Most boats already moored up for the night, so we have the river to ourselves. Can't really explain how this feels. The camera can't do justice to it. It's just a great feeling of peace in the midst of great beauty. A lone swan. Weeping willows. The sounds of the water birds. Elegant gardens, thatched roofs, the undisturbed river reflecting the river banks, the beauty of the place, 
enhanced by the setting sun on the calm water. A gentle breeze crowning the glory. What I like about the broads is being on the boat all together with your loved ones. It can be a small space and we're sharing it from sunrise to sunset. I liken it to camping on the water. You're away in nature together in a peaceful setting. We are on the move throughout the day, enjoying the beautiful scenery. When the weather is nice, the top is open and the sun shines down and life feels grand. Even in the rain, you're surrounded by the natural beauty of the broads. Rocks and broad again, quiet and peaceful. Nate is cooking dinner. We're soon at our destination, Sow House Broad, where we'll moor for the night. We sent up the drone to take a look. Often great broad in the foreground, with rocks and broad in the distance. As the drone flies back over the river, Sala House just beyond, our boat below. The sun setting, the moon rising. Another great day on the broads. Next day we head towards South Walsham Broad. The weather is cloudy today. It's certainly cooler. There's a little breeze and that's good for the sailing boats. But it's nevertheless pleasant as we enjoy cruising down the river. We intend to take a look around South Walsham before dropping Nate in Stalham this evening as it's his last day. He needs to work tomorrow.
I've been here so many times that each place holds memories. I spent the night in South Walsham Broad dozens of times. It's an excellent place to see bird life. There's always a heron or two fishing, or a cormorant sitting atop a tree drying its wings. After a look around, we then began our journey back to Stalham to drop Nate. It's getting cooler. Rachel has put on her coat. Ludham Bridge. Then it's tea time for the twins. The kids loved this holiday. There's always things going on on the banks. Shake, 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 boogie, woogie, woogie. That's how crazy love can be. You gotta sh down in the jungle Oops. where somebody hides. What can you see? Da ba do ba. With a shaky shake here and a shaky shake there. That's how crazy love can be. Sitting on the bow affords excellent views. We're heading up the River Ent, Howe Hill, then Barton Broad, Nate getting a last glimpse. I can tell he's enjoyed the break. Barton is famous for its sunsets, but it's too cloudy today. So we stopped briefly at Barton Turf. Barton Turf is the legendary hangout of Lord Nelson, whose sister lived here. It's also a place where we can take on water. Had a chat with our neighbors here. Rachel and I had hired this boat a few years before. So we decided to send up the drone and have a look at Barton Broad. After seeing it from eye level so many times, it's interesting to get the drone's eye view. I'm being reminded, this is the flattest part of England. Not a hill in sight. And surprisingly, not a sailing boat out today. That's our boat down there, the big one.
Nate took the helm of the Phantom 4 drone to take a look around and get some great shots. The right hand side of the broad is where we'd moored the last two nights. The top of the shot is where the river ant exits to Ersted and Howe Hill. I believe that is Barton Hall down there on the left where Lord Nelson's sister lived and he spent much time. So here's a shot of us all, family portrait at Barton Turf Stathe. But now it's time for Nate to leave us and drive back home as he has to work tomorrow. So off we go back to Stalham. But it's been another great day. And there's much more to come. It was not without a hint of sadness that we departed Salem Stathe, having just seen off Nate. It was a pleasant evening, threatening a good sunset. The quiet evening cruise, certainly for us the perfect anaesthetic as we left him to drive home. But we kept checking the iPhones for his progress. In half an hour we were seeing the sun set over Barton. Once more we moored up for the night in our favourite place. Hey, Benny. Next morning it was life as usual. Rachel dressing Bella, Amy preparing their breakfast, we're making our way to Howe Hill to take the kids on the electric eel. What is that, you might ask? You'll soon see it. Ersted again. The bad news here is that rain is forecast later in the day. Uh, 33% chance of rain later today. Wow, 33% chance of rain. But we still have sunshine. The old wind pump heralds our arrival. The wherry hath looking splendid. The birds singing. And this stretch of the river serene as usual. So here's Brendan, the warden. And behind him, the electric eel boat that will quietly take us through the narrow dikes and reed beds to see the wildlife. Off we go.
just inches above the water, getting a different perspective. Two elusive creatures on the broads are the bitterns, a water bird threatened with extinction that has a loud booming call and that I've never seen, and also the Chinese water deer, a long way from home, that I have caught sight of a couple of times but never filmed. They're too quick. Benny is exploring as usual. Bella having fun. The Broads Authority Wardens are excellent and give a running commentary on what's happening, answer our questions, and point out interesting features. This is not a living creature, it's the shell of the larva of a dragonfly called an exuvia. The dragonfly already came out from it through a tiny hole in the thorax. It's apparently the inspiration for the design of the xenomorphs in the film Aliens. These dikes give great insight into wildlife, and Brendan certainly added much to the experience. He's pointing out a marsh harrier here. This is actually the pollen on the water, and the arctic terns try to scare us away from their nest, I think. So we were able to view the broad from a hide. That gave us opportunities to see the bird life up close. A swan with her five signets, which are of course the ugly ducklings that Hans Christian Andersen wrote about when a swan's egg was hatched with the ducks and was rejected by them as being ugly but eventually realized he was not a duck but a beautiful swan when one day he saw his reflection. So here then are some ugly ducklings. Tchaikovsky would be inspired. couple of cormorants fishing here. A baby black-headed gull. Trust me, the blackhead comes later. Another one. This might well be Swan Lake. We then went back to the boat after an informative time in the midst of nature. Hello. The kids loved it, seeing the birds close up. Hold my hand. Down. Whoa. I made it. Are you going to climb in yourself? Is it? Okay. Good there boy. you go. Hold my hand. Okay. Yes. Then yeah. Ben drove us back. The family home of Brendan, our excellent warden, is actually on the river at Ersted, about half a mile away. His job certainly a labour of love. These dikes cut through the reed beds so that the reedsmen could access the reed. Back to the river. I want to get a shot of Brendan. It was an out-of-the-ordinary trip that was both interesting 
and informative. We are now about to explore How Hill. To model is a good old Norfolk Anglo-Saxon word, meaning to chat or gossip. My favourite Norfolk word is polywiggle, which does not describe Bella, it's a tadpole. For centuries here, a dodman refers to a snail that you'll see doddering along if you observe closely with me by its side trying to keep up. The laws of How Hill are extensive and the kids loved it. I suppose they've been somewhat cooped up on the boat. Now they could run a little, stretch their legs. Here they're 20 months old. Bella found a toy to play with, not the first time. The week before this we were in Bratislava when she did the same thing with the coffee sign as a string quartet played a little night music in the street. Now here's an interesting tree grown from a sapling presented by Adolf Hitler to the gold medal winners of the six-meter yacht class in 1936. The tree bark later used to carve a yacht. One of the winners, Christopher Boardman, was the son of the original owner here. We then made our way to the secret garden, through the wood, as an owl welcomed us. Being reminded of the words of Shakespeare, the earth hath music for those who listen. A peaceful place, a joy to simply stroll through nature, where the human heart can touch and feel things the city knows not of, and feel the satisfaction that deep down we long for, that massages our very being not only finding our place here, but mysteriously feeling a part of it all, like it's not complete without us. And it feels nice, therapeutic. For a moment the ache is gone, and peace surrounds, and we don't want to leave, drawn in to the place of wonder feeling alone, yet knowing we're not alone. Here ends my soliloquy. To be or not to be is up to me. How Hill House is certainly beautiful and it's a great blessing to so many. What a blessing to spend time with the family. Bella is playing again. Well, that was a real fun trip on the electric keel and then into the grounds of the How Hill house and uh, the gardens there, the secret garden. And now we're back on the road. So we continue, Rachel at the helm, admiring the magnificent house, blessed by the day as people sit and relax. Past huge old windmills, 
some retired long ago. Occasionally taking the opportunity to stock up on supplies, dispose of rubbish, or simply enjoy a break. Just taking on uh, water and ice, and uh, soon we're going under Ludden Bridge down to Ranworth. The clouds suddenly ominous, but interesting. I'm fascinated by clouds. They create moods, often make scenery come to life, constantly providing contrasting settings on nature's facets. This is a restaurant <laughs> with a view. The sailing boat sailing no, back in the crazy. background. Ben and Bella are enjoying their lunch. Kids are unpredictable, and here, having run out of seed, they generously feed the ducks with gravel. The old grey goose perplexed by it. At Ramworth, we take time to observe. Water voles, actually an endangered species, inhabit these dikes. His family have lived here for centuries. So we decided to visit St. Helen's Church. There's a narrow path beside the road, safe for the kids to walk. The joy of good memories is that they last forever. And still the best thing about memories is making them. Yet why is it we don't remember days, we remember moments? I love video because it has sounds too, be it the kids or the birds. Or the rain. <laughs> or bath time in the kitchen sink, one of the pleasures of toddlerhood. I can't fit in there anymore. Make the best of it while you can, kids. Ben and Bella love water, and due to there being no bathtub on the boat, this is the best we can do. In no time, the clouds passed and the rainbow appeared. On one side, the dark clouds recede. On the other side, the rainbow appears. The rain still on the windows. The geese calling it a day and sailing off into the sunset. Another memorable day on planet Earth.
So begins our final day here. Ran with stathe. The shop where we can get our morning newspaper and some provisions. The Judith Four. A Martham boat we hired in 1968. Memories. Here I'm reminded of another Norfolk word. You notice Bella's knapsack? In Norfolk dialect, a ladybird is a bishy barnaby. The word ladybird comes from Our Lady's bird, the Virgin Mary's bird. Bishy Barnaby is said to come from an old rhyme, but nobody knows for sure. Some say it's Bishop Barnaby. I remember a green bug in Jamaica that we would avoid as it emitted a terrible stink. That was also called a bishop. I think it was because it was shaped like a bishop's mitre. What's this? Looks like a death's head hawk moth caterpillar. But that's a guess. I'm not a lepidopterist. The kids love water, even the puddles, and Amy has prepared them for it with waterproofs and wellies. They really enjoyed playing in the puddles. For them, a time to explore. Runworth Broad is a Norfolk Wildlife Trust's nature reserve. The village of Renworth, actually on Malthouse Broad. A thousand years ago, a Malthouse was an important building where cereal grain, such as barley, was converted into malt by soaking it in water, allowing it to sprout, and then drying it to stop further growth. Even today, malt is used in brewing beer, whiskey, malted milk, and malt vinegar. Malt houses a thousand years ago were very important and common, and usually placed near water. We're making our way to the Broads Wildlife Center that's on Ranworth Broad, adjacent to the Malthouse Broad, a beautiful thatched cottage in the midst of the car or wetland. Up the staircase on the first floor, we can view the Broad, a grey heron fishing. This heron had just been released because he got caught up in a fishing line. Upstairs at the center, it's also an interactive learning center where school children can observe and participate. Downstairs, a shop. Love the staircase. The shop sells Norfolk ice cream. I love the apple flavor. Then we rode the damselfly electric boat to give the kids a close-up view of the wildlife. As usual, the warden a mine of information and quick to spot interesting sights. The blackhead gull's chicks had just hatched. There's one. There's three. A cacophony of sound. A warning not to get too near. Some young grey geese. 
another grey heron fishing. I remember coming here. When? In a week. We would see only two or three. Now, thanks to the Norfolk Wildlife Trust, they're a common sight. Not only that, but they're used to the boats and don't get spooked easily, allowing me to get great shots. So ends another great Broads adventure. The sojourn of us Broadophiles exploring a unique part of England. That night we stayed in the solitude of Barton Broad once more, had dinner in the midst of nature, watched the sunset, and reflected on another wonderful holiday with the family. <laughs>